Hello student, this is biology lesson for grade 12. Lesson 1, science of biology. The main content of this lesson are method of science, tool of biologist. Student, after we will see this lesson, you will be able to, one, define the concept of science, list and explain the step of scientific method, list and describe biological tool in their function, and discuss the role and the relevance of biology. Student, what is science? Scientists investigate natural events, why and how they can happen. To give a real answer for, they based on a conclusive evidence that they obtain from a repeated experimentation. So, the word science obtained or derived from a Latin word sense chia, with two mean neology. But when we say science, it doesn't mean directly it is neology, but it is a unique system of obtaining neology through scientific method. Student, do you know what do I mean scientific method to mean? Yes, it is a process by which scientists, biologists approach their work. For example, in ancient science, people see their surrounding and they give directly a conclusion what they observe without any experimentation. For example, if certain river flood having a muddy soil, they will see a frog in that soil, muddy soil. Then they conclude as the soil can give rise to a frog. This indicates that life can be arose spontaneously, supporting spontaneous generation. But nowadays scientific method, which is a recent scientific method, they observe their surrounding and they carry out a repeated experimentation. After they carry out a repeated experimentation, they give conclusion, which is a reverse of an ancient one. So, scientific method can have based on a repeated experimentation. Scientific method have its own step that we can pass through. For example, scientific step maybe may includes this like step, which is firstly, we ask a question what we can observe from our surrounding, which is a beginning step of scientific method. So, we observe our surrounding, we ask our mind that can catch our imagination. So, we identify the problem here. Following this all step, we can give a conclusion. Our conclusion must be based on that of a repeated experimentation. This is what by means uh, now a day recent scientific method. For example, observing something catch our imagination and we can identify the problem. For example, if we see why tomato seed do not germinate in tomato itself, this is a problem. This is a beginning problem. Before we give, because it is something a factor, we must be depend on experimentation, which is obtained from repeated one. So, we must be do a background research on the problem identified. This means finding an evidence, finding a data, defining the problem, reviewing, collecting a data that can be supported about the problem identified, which you mean qualitatively. It may be quantitative data may be gathered about the problem identified. Based on the problem identified and the of data gathered, we can construct hypothesis. Hypothesis to mean it tentatively explained about the problem. So accordingly, there is chemical in tomatoes that stop seed germinating in tomatoes. It may not be true. We must be identify whether it is because of the presence of tomato or chemical in it or not. How we can prove? We must be use one certain jar that contain a tomato juice, adding uh, a tomato seed here, and the else with that of a distilled water. Then we'll see whether it can properly germinate, in which it can germinate, in which it cannot be. We must be have a controlled group here, controlling a jar that contains seed with that of covered with that of tomato juice, and the seed that can be covered with that of a distilled water. This is tentatively explained. Then, 
based on that of a hypothesis that can be constructed, we will predict our answer or that of our outcome, a result that can be contributed. So here, it may be educated guess until it is disproved or that of proved. So that our prediction may be seed covered by tomato juice will not be germinate, our prediction. Because of there is a chemical that we call tomato juice, seed may not be germinate. We cannot be conclude based on that of our prediction still now. Because there may be another factor. We must be check whether it is because of it or not by experimentation. The main aim of our experimentation is to test our hypothesis true or not. To accept our hypothesis or reject it. When we design our experimentation, one, we must be identify what is our independent variable which is a cause of our problem is. And again, we must be deduced for that of the effect or dependent variable. And again, we must be identify experimental group here. And again, control the group that we can group, compare with. When we say independent variable, a variable that an experimenter can be bring under experimentation. And the dependent variable is a variable that can be obtained as a result of change in independent variable or not. So student, let's identify the following. In the effect of tomato juice on seed germination, identify independent variable, dependent variable, confounding variable, and the controlled variable. Well then, student, in this question or in this problem, dependent variable is an effect of our problem, which we call seed germination, tomato seed germination. Whereas our independent variable is what are the factor cause, presence of tomato juice here. Whereas controlled variable is a variable that can affect our problem but can't do nothing because it is held constant by the experimenter. Just like temperature may be affect seed germination, light may be affect seed germination, moisture may be affect too, but it can't do nothing because held constant. Whereas, confounding variables, a variable that can exist together our problem, but can't do nothing, it can exist. It can affect how much it can affect, just like that of a gene presence just like that of a age of seed can be. You can identify this problem again having another question. To say fair test, if our experimentation can be carried out in well-oriented manner, following all step of scientific method, we call it is said to be fair test. Fair test can be indicate as change in independent variable can be bring to that of change in dependent variable. Again, we can analyze our result and they come to draw a conclusion. A conclusion that maybe goes with that of our hypothesis. And then after, after we analyze our result, we are come to accept or that of reject it. If our hypothesis can be supported by repeated experimentation, it can accept it and it develops in that of theory. If not, but it is rejected. Rejection or that of acceptation of our hypothesis about our identified problem based on that of an evidence. So here finally, after we identified our problem and whether accept or that of reject it, the result of our experimentation must be reported to that of a concerned body. 
to that of agricultural research institute or one that study about that of tomatoes. This is to be repeat the work that can be done here, to be understand more about that of the problem identified, whether it is accepted by another biologist or not can be depend on the three main activity. One, how much the experimentation is said to be accurate. Accuracy means a measure of how much it is privately measured, the tools that we use, and indicate about that of price measurement and error made here. And again, reliability of the problem must be seen here. When you say here, is it the experimentation is an average? Is it maybe standardized? Is it maybe reliable or that consistent to that of the whole country problem? And again, validity of our experimentation must be seen here. When you say validity, all the scientific step of scientific method properly followed, is it because of independent variable that brings to that of dependent variable must be seen first. After this identified, following the reporting method or step, we can report to that of another concerned body. Student, I hope you can have another problem and they pass through that of all the step of scientific method to solve a problem. So, biologist as is an experimentation science based on that of a repetitive evidence that is obtained from that of experimentation, we can give a biological answer for the problem. Biologist based on that of experimentation that can be from that of an observation to that of give a real conclusion. The second topic that I'm going to show you here is biologists to be obtained data for experimentation. They can gather data or observe from that of the field. They can obtain from that of the lab. A data obtained from that of lab, data obtained from that of the field maybe by using a biological tool. Biological tool means it is used for that of collecting data from different sources. This tool may be laboratory tool in the in laboratory, field tool in the field. Let's see one by one. When we say laboratory tool, the most important laboratory tool that biologists can be used and the highly important in development of biology is microscope. Microscope may be classified into light microscope, and again, electron microscope, based on the source of energy they use. Based on the source of energy they use, microscope can be classified into light and that of electron microscope. This light microscope, it can have low magnification power. It has its own low resolution power. That can increase the size of a specimen that you observe from somewhere it is much smaller, whereas electron microscope may be classified into one, transition electron microscope, which is very important in seeing the detailed structure of specimen that are seen. And again, scanning electron microscope, which is very important in seeing the surface structure of the specimen that we see. For example, here is student, let me see this microscope. This one is a compound microscope, a light microscope with eyepiece lens and again with objective lens. They use a beam of light to use, uh, form a magnified image of a specimen, whereas this one is based on beam of electron. Beam of light, beam of electron. So every microscope have their own magnification that of resolution power. When we say this, Increasing the size of an image bigger than its actual size, we say magnification, which is based on that of some product of magnification power of objective lens times magnification power of eyepiece lens. If certain problem given for us, we kind of find the answer for that of magnification power of certain microscope. When we say resolution here, but it is a tendency of microscope to see or observe the detailed structure of a specimen which is based on adding of chemical or not. Chemical addition. If we want to see animal cell, there is a chemical added. If we want to see plant cell, 
we want to be add a chemical here. Addition of chemical is to observe a specimen more clearly here. The another very important tool that biologists use in laboratories, centrifuge. Centrifuge is a most important laboratory tool, which is very important in identification of solid from that of liquid when simple filtration is not adequate, which is based on the mass or that of weight of a matter, as their mass vary and again density vary. When a sample of liquid and that of solid become added together, the gravitational force, this centrifuge becomes spin in high speed, the gravitational force that is found on the solid makes them to be contained to that of the bottom, then again we can capable to identify easily. The heavy mass become moved to the bottom with highly spinning power, and again the lower mass become go upper. The heavy mass to the bottom, the light mass become move upper. This is very important in identification of solid from that of liquid. The else very important tool in laboratories, one, pipettes, cylinder, and that of syringe, which is very important in measuring the volume of gas. Gas volume can be measured by this tool. And the most important tool that biologists now, they use this, Petri dish. Student, do you know what is the advantage of Petri dish for biologists in laboratory? It's of course, petri dish is, it is made from that of red alg. And again, it is, looks like, just like a jelly-like structure, which is very important in growing bacteria in laboratory. It contains an agar jelly-like structure, which is rich of nutrients, just like that of carbon, just like that of nitrogen, and again, mineral elements in the else can be found in this petri dish or agar. So, this agar is or petri dish is the most important laboratory tool to be culture or grow bacteria in laboratory. In the propagating plants from single plantlets, and they again see the effect of antibiotics on strain of bacteria. To collect data from the field, Biologists can be used a field tool too. For example, these are some part of tools that biologists can be used in the field. Do you know what the name and the advantage of this tool, students? Good. This is very important in collecting data from the field outside of a lab. For example, GPS, which I mean global positioning system, very important to take an exact location, map of an area from where data can be taken. Theodolites, which is very important in recording data. And again, data logger, which is very important in recording data. Whereas theodolite, which is very important in taking height or that of slope of an area that you are going to take data from. And again, pH kit, which is very important to measure the pH in the, of soil or that of water or that of area from where we are going to take a data. Whereas quadrat is again very important in dealing or studying the distribution 
abundance of an organism in certain area. So, to see one by one, quadrat is very important again. It can be placed on the water, and again it can be placed on the land. It is very important in dealing or estimation of, it is random, by the way. Quadrat is a random system. It cannot be given an accurate number of an organism that we are going to study. Data logger is two, which is very important in recording data. Data can be collected in recording manner. Where are pH kit is two, which is very important in measuring pH of an area from where we are going to take uh, data. Global positioning system, which can abbreviate like uh, GPS to take an exact or accurate map of an area from where we are going to take a data again. Theodolite is two, to measure height or that of slope of an area that we are going to take a data from. And again, flow is to another laboratory tool, which is very important to measure the rate flow of matter. Very important in taking data from that water that are following. Well done, student. So, biology is very important. Since it is an experimental sense, which is based on that of experimentation to give a real evidence for a problem that you encounter, it is very important in giving scientific answer for a biological question that our society encountered. For example, to see one by one, biology is very important in agriculture. I hope you know what is agriculture mean. The role of agriculture is considered as it is a backbone. It is where the government becomes steady over agricultural lead industrialization. So it is targeted to be improve productivity. When you say here, the contribution of biology for agriculture is agreed by the action of genetic modification here. When we say genetic modification, a means of transferring a gene. Genetic modification to means, let's say a plant is highly productive, highly resistant, and again, it can capable to resistant to that of droughts. It may be resistant to that of a disease. It may be resistant to that of a pestis. So, we can capable to transfer a gene that is found in highly productive plant to another less productive in that of less resistant plant. If a gene can be successfully transferred from that of A plant to that of B plant, B plants can be capable to express a gene that is transferred to it, just like that of A plant. So, action of genetic modification is very important in improvement of our agriculture, which is a contribution of biology. So here, biology in agricultural system to produce extra plants that can adapt a new changing environment. Plants that cannot lose its productivity with a changing condition. And again, highly productive one. And again, disease and again, drought resistance plants here. So biology contribute a lot for agriculture to ensure food security of the country. Well then, the else Contribution of biology for answering biological problem is biology interaction with that of medicine. When you say medicine, it can give an advice for individual. It can advise the government too. In what is the advantage of limiting population growth? How we can limit? What is the interaction between population growth and that of development of the country by giving free contraception methods, free family planning system. Another, it may be the invasion of disease, how we can treat a disease, giving advice on the way of treating a disease, how we can develop a new vaccine, how we can develop a new tablet and that of new drug here. So biology give an advice for the individual and again, governments. Well then, student, another most important and critical activity that biology give is for environment. The contribution of biology to the environment is 
are reversible. Biology contributes to the environment. Every organism need a suitable environment to be survived in. For biology become create a good ecology. Biology create how they can interact with that of the environment. How population interact with the environment. How they can survive in their environment. And again, how we can monitor the impact of carbon emission to the atmosphere from the industry. And again, from any other burning that maybe contribute to the problem of global warming. Else, biology is very important in knowing how much abundant organism and where they can be distributed. Seeing distribution and the abundance of an organism in ecosystem can be dealt by. So biology is very important in dealing abundance and that of distribution of organism in our ecosystem. The one critical thing here is biology is very important in ensuring environmental conservation, conserving our environment, using our environmental resources in sustainable manner. If we cannot use our environment in conserved manner, our future generation may not be sustained. To sustain our future generation, our environment must be conserved. Biology gives a direction to that of the environment, so how we can use our environment wisely. Students, in our nowadays lesson, we have seen what is science to means. And what is the difference between ancient science and that of now recent science? Where one depends on that of simply observation to that of conclusion, which we call ancient science. And there again, recent science can be depend over that of repeated experimentation to give a conclusion based on that of certain step. And again, science depends on that of data that can be obtained from that of field and that of laboratory which can be collected by field in that of laboratory tool. Additionally, we have seen the relevance and the importance of biology in our country in agricultural sector, we have seen in medicine sector, and again we have seen in environment sector. Student, this is all about this day lesson.